We're continuing with Unit 2, Section 5, as we look at some exceptions to the octet rule. So in this molecule here, we're going to draw the Lewis electron dot diagram for xenon tetrafluoride. So once again, hopefully you can see that xenon is going to be the central atom, since there's only one of that, uh, of that element. So we're going to put xenon in the middle with the four fluorine atoms around. Can you see how many valence electrons each fluorine will get? Well, it's in group 17, so I'll put seven dots around each of those. So we have seven, 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 and seven. And in case you missed the last video, you might want to pick that up. We always try to start with the outside and work our way in. That seems to reduce errors. And also try to pair these electrons up as much as you can. Next, we have the xenon atom. How many valence electrons does xenon have? Well, it has eight. As you look at it on the periodic table, it's in group 18. So I'm going to put the eight dots around here as well as I can. So we have one, two, three, and four. And you might see that we kind of have a problem here because we have run out of room. We've only put four of Xenon's eight dots up here. We have to put up five, six, seven, and eight somewhere. But where do we do that? Do we put these as double bonds or something? Well, that's not what we do. Here's what you do if you run out of room. Just put the extra electrons as unshared pairs on the central atom. So that's something that we'll see quite often whenever there's an expanded octet. You run out of room. So in this case, those last four dots just end up being unshared pairs on the central atom. Now this is getting a little bit cluttered. But what I want you to see is that we have four shared pairs here. There's a shared pair here. There's a shared pair here. There's a shared pair here. And there's a shared pair here. And we have two unshared pairs on that central atom. So this is what your final version of your electron dot diagram should look like, where you have four single bonds and then the unshared pairs on that xenon as well as, of course, everything on your, your fluorines. So in this case, xenon has more than eight, doesn't it? It actually has 12. So, you know, xenon uh, will have more than eight. Some people might take a look at this molecule and say, well, hang on, I thought xenon was a noble gas, and I thought noble gases can't make chemical compounds. Well, that's usually the case, but xenon actually can make several chemical compounds. And xenon tetrafluoride actually does happen to be one of the more common compounds of the noble gases, especially xenon. Let's take a look at another example. We'll try sulfur tetrafluoride. So once again, you can see that sulfur is our central atom since there's only one of that element. So I'm putting sulfur in the middle with the four fluorines surrounding it. And let's start with the outside, I'll work our way in. So how many dots will each fluorine get? Well, it has seven, right? It's in group 17. So seven dots for each of those fluorine atoms. And now how about sulfur? Well, sulfur is in group 16. It has six valence electrons. We need to put six dots on there. So we'll count that out. We have one, two, three, four. And do you see that we have the same problem as we had before? We are out of room, aren't we? We don't have any room to put five and six. So where do those go? Unshared pair on the central atom. So I'm going to stick them right there. And when we draw our final diagram, you want to reflect that we have four single bonds. And then there's that unshared pair or that lone pair right there on the sulfur. So how many valence electrons does sulfur have in this structure? It has 10, doesn't it? Because we have the eight from those bonds, and then we have the unshared pair, the lone pair, so that makes it a total of 10 valence electrons on the sulfur. So that certainly is an expanded octet. Let's try one more example here. Let's try phosphorus pentachloride. So once again, looks like phosphorus is gonna be our central atom, and we have five chlorines around it. So we'll start with the chlorines and work our way in. How many dots does every chlorine get? Well, it's going to be seven, right? Because chlorine is in group 17. It's a halogen. So we'll put the seven dots around each of these. Seven, 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 and seven. 
trying to pair these up as well as we can. I know we have we don't have a whole lot of room here, so it gets a little bit cluttered. But how about the phosphorus? Well, you look at the periodic table and you see that phosphorus has five dots that it's going to bring to the table here. So we're going to put the five dots in there. One, two, three, four, five. And that's going to uh, give everything a bond. But do you see a problem here? Do you see that phosphorus, because it has the five bonds, there are five shared pairs here. One, two, three, four, five. It has an expanded octet. But that's okay. Anytime you have a central atom, like phosphorus in this case, that's bonded to more than four atoms, that central atom is going to have to exhibit that expanded octet. There's no other way around it. So when you draw the final structure, this is what it's going to look like. The phosphorus that has five single bonds, one extending to each of those chlorine atoms. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. hope you have learned something about expanded octets and how to draw those and work with those uh, as you draw Lewis electron dot diagrams. If you learned something, please uh, shoot me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you would. And uh, join me as we uh, go on very soon in, in our next video to Unit 2, Section 6.